Hey, it's Lance here, and I want to chat with you today about your metabolism. Chances are, if you have done something in the past that worked to lose weight or to get yourself in shape and it stopped working, most likely you are battling some variation of what we call metabolic adaptation. The thing of it is, is that over the course of time, when we're reducing body fat, there, this process known as metabolic adaptation that you might have heard me talk about on a few other videos is something that causes people to freak out feeling like what used to work no longer works and they start usually doing a couple of different things. Number one, maybe cutting calories even more and becoming more rigid. This doesn't work. Number two, they start working out harder, longer, or more intensely, etc. Now, this can work for a minute, but it's not going to work long time if metabolic adaptation is present. So, what I want to do is chat with you a little bit about what metabolic adaptation is, how your metabolism slows down, and then give you the peace of mind of how to actually recuperate that. So, if you have done something that didn't work this time, but it worked in the past, keep listening. I'm going to give you the techniques to actually understand what's going on and towards the end of the video I want to give you a training that I did for my pain clients to help them speed up their broken metabolism and actually start losing weight again. Now the cool thing is one of my clients actually we did a reverse diet with her and actually uh, we focused on repairing the metabolism and I normally tell people when you're reverse dieting in order to uh, to repair your metabolism, to get it back up the snuff where it should be, don't plan on losing body fat at that time. Don't plan on losing scale pounds because we are increasing the calories at times. We are going to cause some things that can cause you to increase weight. But the cool thing is, is number one, after you do this, it is going to cause your body to be able to lose fat like it used to. The other cool thing is that a lot of times, People have not been able to lose body fat because they're at such a low calorie number that their body is actually going into starvation mode, which is kind of what metabolic adaptation is. And so when we start giving them more calories systematically, we've seen some clients drop as much as eight sizes simply by giving them more calories and putting them on a program that did not overwhelm the, their central nervous system or their metabolism. So if that intrigues you, if you want to learn a little bit more about this, stay tuned. I'm going to dive into this just a second. So very first thing is how do you know if you have metabolic adaptation? What are the, the precursors that lead to this? Well, here's the thing. If you've dieted frequently, if you've yo-yo dieted, if you've, you've, you know, if you diet once or twice a year, even once a year, you are most likely somebody who has experienced some level of metabolic adaptation. Now, chances are you probably have experienced a large amount of metabolic adaptation. So what happens is, is over the course of time, doing either crash diets or different variations of diets that are based on depleting massive amount of calories, your body begins to perceive that food is too sparse, and so it stops actually burning fat and starts storing it for energy because it fears, not literally, but there's a fear within the body that food is too sparse and it's got to store fat as energy because it doesn't know when it's going to get its next meal. Okay, so the other thing, if you've lost and gained weight at least once, chances are you have experienced some variation of metabolic adaptation. Again, if you've lost it and didn't keep it back, it didn't keep it off, chances are this came back because of either habits that were out of alignment with what worked or you went back to what was normal but your metabolism stayed in the past where it shouldn't be. The third thing that can happen is if you've done restrictive diets or low calorie diets for even a little bit, if you've done you know, paleo, keto, um, if you've done any of the, you know, the South Beach diets, a lot of these diets are really predicated around this notion of doing like a 12 to 1500 calorie uh, intake. And for a lot of people, their intake should be closer to around 1800 to 23, 2400 calories for a female, even higher for a male. And so what happens is these calories are so significantly low that again, when you go back to normal, what was normal is now considered by your body to be a surplus, meaning that you reduce calories and a deficit causes you to lose weight to begin with, but your body adapts. And so, for example, let's say that you're, if you were taking in 2000 calories a day and that maintains your body weight and I put you on 1500 calories a day and you start losing body fat, 
the longer you're on that 1500 calories a day, your body will go from needing 2000 a day to maintain your, your body weight to 18, 17, 16, 15. Eventually, the 1500 calories that you're taking in becomes your new maintenance to maintain your body weight. Now, let that sink in. What this means is that, again, if you are used to eating 24, 2500 calories, you go start doing keto and it drops you. Now, chances are you probably have no clue how many calories you've dropped if you're doing keto or paleo or what have you. But what happens is you've reduced calories significantly. <clears throat> so what ends up happening is the longer you're on this diet, if you will, your metabolism is slowing itself down in order to preserve and conserve energy. Because again, when you've reduced the amount of food that you're taking in, the amount of calories, your body is trying to decipher what is happening. Do we burn fat here and that's why they're giving us less food? Or are we getting less food because there's a famine and we need to store fat just in case? If you are giving it one signal, the first signal, you have got metabolic adaptation. So the, here, the number four thing that happens is if you've done tons of cardio to lose weight in the past or recently, again, doing a, con a tons of cardio is very similar to removing calories. If I remove 600 calories a day from you to lose weight or I cause you to burn an extra 600 calories each day to lose weight, it still is the same principle. We're creating a 600 calorie deficit within what your body normally is used to. So if you're doing tons of cardio over the course of time and you went from burning four, five, 600 calories to burning a thousand calories and you're still not where you wanna go, this is due to metabolic adaptation. You're not going to outwork yourself. You're not going to work yourself out of this problem. And you're not going to reduce your calories <clears throat> enough to actually feel comfortable. In fact, what happens is usually people get to the sticking point and they start trying to just change all different things. I'm going to do intermittent fasting. I'm going to cut this out every two hours. I'm going to cut out sugars. Well, the problem is, is you've already made significant changes and sacrifices just to get where you are now and you're still not where you want to go so the next thing that happens is people tend to start getting too rigid even more rigid than they were now here's the deal you're already struggling you're not getting where you want to go because you've got metabolic adaptation and now the solution for you is to actually make life more miserable by cutting more calories or working out harder do you really think that that's going to be sustainable i can tell you the answer is no this is what happens to cause people to burn out over and over and over again. What I want you to do is actually focus on long-term solutions instead of short-term solutions to fix these long-term problems. So the number five here that I want to give you is that if you've noticed what used to work to lose weight doesn't work anymore, this is another indicator that you have metabolic adaptation. I started with that one in the beginning, but again, a lot of people will start noticing once they've dieted once or twice, hey, what used to work is not working anymore. Guys, let me caution you. Do not start trying to burn more calories or cut more calories right away. You need to heal your metabolism before you are suited to start losing body fat again. Now, I get a lot of people that have major metabolic issues and they come into the program wanting to lose body fat and they don't realize that we have to fix your metabolism before you can lose body fat. The reason you're in this predicament is because the things that you did, the things that you thought would work, now they worked, but they worked at the expense of your metabolism. And your notion might be to do that same thing again. I'm going to work harder. I'm going to grind it out. I'm going to cut more calories. This is going to be the thing that will seal your fate and make it so that your metabolism is so broken it might take six to nine months to fix it. I urge you not to do this. You want to actually look into healing or repairing your metabolism. The very final thing is if you've noticed more rapid or frequent weight gain than before. Now this one's a huge one. This is where your metabolism has not only slowed down, but it is in red alert where you're any food that you're eating it is immediately storing as fat because your metabolism is so jacked up that it's trying to protect you from starvation. This is not a good place to be in, but it's fixable. So <clears throat> my question is for you, if you are ready to be done doing the short-term solutions for your long-term problems, 
you're going to want to start considering your metabolism. Rather than just looking for, hey Lance Lauren, what's the best diet to put me on so that I can, or what workout program, or how do I get more of my triceps? You're missing the forest through the trees. You need to understand the metabolism is at the forefront of your ability to lose body fat and keep it off. Now, I will absolutely break your heart in a second by saying that when you have metabolic damage, metabolic adaptation, whatever you want to call this, it's not a quick thing to get over. I wish it were. Some people, I've gotten them to eight to nine weeks of reverse dieting, and they got it where their metabolism caused them to lose so much body fat once we, we fixed it. But then I've had others, even myself, I've had to do a six-month reverse diet to repair my metabolism after doing a stint of cutting. The fact is, is that every person will go through metabolic adaptation. The issue is, what do you do with it? Do you know what to do with it? Do you know what it is? Most trainers, most coaches have no clue about the metabolism, so they don't realize by cutting your calories more and by dropping and causing you to work out harder and longer that yes, they might be getting you a little bit more results in the in the upfront, but at the major, major expense of your metabolism, guys. This is a travesty. Do not do this. Do not let people mess with your metabolism like this. What I would implore you to do is to learn what your metabolism is, what it does, what are the factors that causes you to lose weight and to actually store it. When you get this big overview of what causes this, you're no longer looking for diets because you know that the diet is just a modality of causing you to lose body fat through the metabolic trainings. So the thing of it is, is that my metabolic masterclass that I created for my paying clients uh, a decent little bit ago, this one here not only is going to give you why and how this happens, but it's also going to go into um, how to overcome these issues and to get a deeper and greater understanding of what it is that you can do to get results that don't just slip through your fingertips. Because I must say, one of the things that irritates me the most is seeing how many people will go through something in 90 days and brag or have a trainer brag on them look at so-and-so, they're down this much and you know this many days. And it seems like it's gotten more extreme that trainers and coaches are sharing like, Susie dropped 30 pounds in 30 days. Guys, if you're dropping 30 pounds in 30 days, I can promise you, not only is this dangerous, the second thing is your metabolism is going to be screwed. Don't do this. So the big message, the takeaway that I can tell you is, do not set, try and set records for losing weight fastest. Aim for what makes the most sense for sustainability, for results, and for long-term sustainability as far as adherence. What this means to you is that if you get results and you don't know how to repeat those results, hear me, you do not have a permanent transformation. What you have is a temporary makeover and you're just not sure when that makeover is going to stop. So this is the reality of things. So if you want to learn a little bit more of how this is caused, what you can do about it, and actually take your metabolism back in your own hands, I would highly implore you to go to LanceCroneCoaching.com slash metabolic. And this is going to give you access to a, um, a little mini course that was originally $297 because it's that valuable and I'm giving it to you for free. I want you to watch this. I want you to learn it. And I really know that this is going to change the way that you see food, the way that you see fitness, and it's going to give you that peace and certainty that my metabolism is not jacked forever. So again, that's LanceGrownCoaching.com slash metabolic. You can go to that. Um, if you have any questions or if you want to know how to spell something or whatever, comment below, let me know, and I will send you that link as well, guys. Thanks so much for watching. Let me know what were your takeaways from this video. Did you know that your metabolism can adapt like this? And did you know that the very thing to lose weight usually causes it? Let me know in the comments below, guys. I'll see you soon.